keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm just about to talk about the linebackers. Linebacker depth chart, and it might be a little bit more interesting than you might think because not only have the 49ers continued to add young players to an already impressive room, but they also added players in free agency. They brought players back. And then we have question marks about Drake Greenlaw. Drake Greenlaw's availability is probably not going to be there early on in the season. He's probably going to start the year on the pup list, which is physically unable to perform. So the 49ers are going to have question marks, not just about the depth chart, but also who's going to start in place of Drake Greenlaw. Let's be honest. There's no replacing the production you get from Greenlaw. And the 49ers normal starter last year, Orrin Burks, he left in free agency. Now, the thought process seems to be the 49ers allowed him to leave in free agency. The 49ers tried to bring in a couple of different guys, including Eric Kendricks. That didn't work out. He elected to take less money to go play for Dallas. But the 49ers did bring in Devondre Campbell, linebacker from the Green Bay Packers. In 2021, Campbell was an all-pro in this league. Never easy to do. Over the last two seasons, he has definitely not lived up to those expectations. Now, Campbell has his own beliefs on why that's the case. He believes that he wasn't used right in Joe Barry's defense, that since that 2021 season, he's been trying to be a good team player, and that has affected his ability to produce on the field. So he's coming to the 49ers with a different mentality and an opportunity to go out there and show everyone who he can be. He wants to be a part of the number one defense or at least perceived number one defense in the NFL, and play alongside Fred Warner. And who wouldn't want to play with Fred Warner? You play with Fred, he makes things happen. And if you're around the ball, you're going to have an opportunity to make things happen yourself. So the 49ers depth chart is going to be interesting. It's a mixture of holdovers, players who have been with the 49ers for a while that they've developed, players that they've drafted recently over the last two seasons, and then guys who they brought in in free agency. We're going to kind of try to go through it and just put the players in order about how we see them right now in the depth chart. Of course, this is going to change. This is just the initial depth chart heading into training camp. As the players begin to play in practice, they'll move up and down this up the depth chart. And then potentially when they get to preseason, they can make even more of a jump. But you want to be within the top five or six linebackers if you believe that you're going to make this team. How many linebackers will the 49ers keep? I think that's a good question. When is Dre Greenlaw going to be available is the bigger question. If he starts on pup, they might elect to keep a extra linebacker just in case. That way they don't lose somebody, potentially cut, and that player get claimed. Last year, the 49ers definitely got picked over with some of the young players that left, whether that was Ill Manning going to Arizona or that was other guys getting picked up as well. The 49ers know that players they cut could get selected and added to other teams' 53-man rosters. When you're this talented and you draft this well, it's always the potential to happen. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Appreciate it. If you're listening on audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe. Please give it a five-star rating. And if you're going to bet, bet with Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoffs. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. So linebacker has been a consistency for a couple of positions. Number one, all pro Fred is going to man the middle and he's going to be absolutely fantastic. Last year, I think he was the best defensive player on the entire field. And that's saying a lot when you've got a defensive end, the caliber of Nick Bosa and a cornerback that played as well as Carverius Ward played. 
But Fred Warner once again stood out. He's a player that handles everything, and he is the 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 guy who holds everything together for this defense. He's the absolute best linebacker in the NFL. And so the 49ers, whenever they go ahead and add people to this room, they add players that complement the things that Fred Warner does. And Fred Warner does pretty much everything well. But we know the 49ers had a little bit of struggles when it came to run defense. Was that because of Fred? No. Did he make an occasional mistake here or there? Of course he did. He's human. And these football players sometimes make mistakes. But he played really well. The only times he gets in trouble is when he tries to be super Fred and do everything on the field and sometimes will get out of his normal responsibilities. But sometimes he plays super Fred and he makes a tremendous play. So you take the good with the bad. Now, when it comes to the rest of the linebacker room, he's had a steady running mate since 2019. Trey Greenlaw came on the scene, and Trey Greenlaw has been absolutely fantastic in every role the 49ers have put him in. Originally, he was not playing the Will linebacker like he is now. Quan Alexander was. But it was quick, once Quan got hurt, that Trey Greenlaw stepped in and took over, and he's never looked back. Trey Greenlaw is a Pro Bowl caliber player in this league. Now, of course, he's going to have a long road ahead. He's still recovering from an Achilles injury he suffered during the Super Bowl. He was running off the sidelines to get on the field for the 49ers. Ultimately, that played a big part in the outcome of the Super Bowl. Greg Greenlaw is an effective player on defense. He's a guy that sets the tone in the run game, but also can cover running backs and tight ends and make it difficult for them to make plays. Just look at what happened to Travis Kelsey. He had one catch for one yard in the first half. Greg Greenlaw goes down, and then Kelsey starts having an impact. Could that be adjustments that Andy Reid made? Of course, but it could also be the fact that once Oren Burks was filling that role, he gave up nine catches. That's just a tremendous difference between what happened with Burks and what happened with Greenlaw. And it's not so much that Oren Burks played bad, but that just shows how good Greenlaw is. Travis Kelsey is one of the best to do it. So you expect him to take advantage of a linebacker, not a linebacker like Dre Greenlaw. So the 49ers are going to have to worry about replacing his production. They have to worry about replacing a will linebacker that can do everything you need to do from cover to play the run and to be able to impose will and bring physicality and set a tone for the defense. He is the enforcer and the 49ers are going to need to replace that. Because the likelihood is that he's going to start on the pup list. I think just realistically, it would be hard for him to come back at the beginning of the season. Now, there has been some projections. Maybe he'd be ready for week one. I think the likelihood is more that he's ready during the middle of the season. And I think that's the best case scenario for the 49ers. But they knew they had to go out and do something. So they brought in Devondre Campbell. And like I brought up before, this is a guy that was an all pro at one point during his career. He's got the ability. He's physical. He's strong. He's fast. He's a guy that can definitely hold down the role of Greenlaw. But don't get me wrong. You're going to have a step down from Dre Greenlaw. And I know that Campbell's been an all-pro. But Dre Greenlaw is a better football player. Dre Greenlaw compliments Fred Warner the best of any linebacker that I've seen. And we've seen Fred have to play with a few different guys. So 49ers bring in Campbell. And Campbell's going to man the Dre Greenlaw role until Greenlaw gets back. And with Campbell, you're going to get a nose for the football, some physicality, some aggressiveness. He's got some ability to cover. He's not going to cover as good as Dre, but he's also a veteran who knows how to play in big football games. He's been in big-time games in the playoffs, big-time games in the playoffs against the 49ers. So he knows what they do. Now, whatever the 49ers believe about what he has said about Joe Barry, I don't think it matters. Was Joe Barry playing him out of position, not using him aggressively like he should have? Yes, that has definitely been documented because LaFleur, Matt LaFleur, took over that Green Bay defense pretty much at the end of the season, and we saw Campbell get used more, and we saw that defense start to play a little bit different and a little bit better. So Barry ended up getting fired. So the thought process behind what Campbell was saying about that defense seems to be correct. So you have Campbell set up. Then what do you do after that? You know you drafted the two young cats last year, D. Winters and Jalen Graham. Are those guys ready to step in? Is D. Winters or Jalen Graham ready to play Sam linebacker for your football team? Are they ready to push Devondre Campbell to start at will? I don't know. I think they're going to have to potentially jump some people that were ahead of them before because the 49ers brought back Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. And, of course, everyone's thoughts on Demetrius Flanagan Fowles have been 
up and down over the last several years. Uh, Flanagan Fowles, it was a little bit surprised. They didn't even offer him a restricted free agent contract last year. Yet he comes back last year. 49ers needed him on special teams, and they needed him in the linebacker room. And he got significant snaps, including snaps uh, in the Super Bowl. Now, he's going to be tasked with potentially filling that Sam linebacker role early. We know he's really close with Fred Warner. He's really close with Trey Greenlaw. And Coach Johnny Hollins has a really good feel on who he is. He's been developed by this football team as an undrafted free agent, a guy that went from playing safety at Arizona to playing linebacker for the 49ers. So there's a comfort there of who that player is. I think early on, he's the guy that's going to be stepping in and potentially filling that role. He'll get the first team reps when they first get into training camp with Campbell and with Fred Warner. At some point, the San Francisco 49ers are going to have to make a decision on Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. Is he going to be a backup? Is he going to be a starter? And the way they're going to do that is by the guys who are next up. And I think D. Winters is the fourth linebacker. And D. Winters has the best possibility of getting into the starting lineup. The 49ers were willing to use a six-round pick on him out of TCU last year. And Winters has all the measurables. Number one, he's fast. He flies around and he makes plays. He's an absolute crazy blitzer. Uh, he gets after the quarterback in a big way. And if you want to use him there, he is. He can be very talented and very aggressive. Now, when it comes to Winters, one of the things he struggled with last season was being able to be in the right spots at the right time. He just didn't quite have the nose that he had in college. Part of the reason was he's an instinctive player. He goes off instincts. And when you know what you're doing, your responsibilities, and when you have a good feel for what the offense of opposite of you is doing, you can let your instincts take over and you can make plays, a la Talano Hufanga, a guy that really played off instincts the first part of his all-pro season, and it suited him very well. He had an understanding of his role, what the offense was going to do, and he took advantage. D. Winters is one of those players as well, very instinctive. As he gets more comfortable, he'll acclimate to doing the things he needs to do within this defense. But the athleticism gives him an opportunity. A guy that can cover in space, that can run with running backs and tight ends. A guy that also hits very hard and very physical. Winters is a guy they're grooming to be a big-time player. Could this be the time for him to step up? It should be. He Winters has now been through this system. He's now been through training camp. He's now been through a season where he's got significant playing time. And now he should have an opportunity to go out there and make plays. I mean, when you get thrust out there in some of the playoffs and Super Bowl matchups because of injuries and you get some good playing in, playing time in those games, you have to look at it as a huge advantage as you progress in your development. So I expect D. Winters to be the fourth guy and try to pass Demetrius Flanagan Fowles for the opportunity to play Sam Linebacker. I think ultimately D. Winters is a future will linebacker in this league. Could he be an eventual replacement for Drake Greenlaw? Maybe. I think Fortners would love to keep their hands on Drake Greenlaw as long as they can, but will he price himself out at some point? But Winners is a guy that 49ers are high on, and they would love to get D. Winners uh, some opportunities to go out there and make some plays for this defense because when D. Winners is around and he feels comfortable, he's not only going to bring ball carriers to the ground, but he's going to make plays, interceptions, sacks, a big time place follow D winners. And I know they're excited about getting him within this defense. Next up would be Jalen Graham. Uh, Jalen Graham, of course, drafted in the seventh round. Another guy translated from playing safety to playing linebacker. He was very impressive in training camp in the preseason, stopping the run. He would get his nose in there. And one of the big surprising factors was the fact the Niners played him at Mike linebacker, which was a question mark. Who was going to play Mike linebacker if Fred Warner was hurt? Uh, they had a couple options. They had Jalen Graham. They had Curtis Robinson. But who else was it going to be? It used to be Aziz Alshire. Not something Trey Greenlaw does. I don't know if Devondre Campbell will be that guy. But the 49ers put some confidence in Jalen Graham, the fact that he was able to pick up this defense. Now, listening to a lot of the commentary during the year from the coaches as the season progressed and just looking at who went in the games first, it appears D. Winters passed up Jalen Graham on the depth chart at some point during the season. That's a significant move for D. Winters and maybe a significant move back for Jalen Graham. Now, I think the four years are still high on both of these players. Winters' athleticism, Jalen Graham's uh, mental state, the way he's able to handle and decipher what offense they're doing, his nose for the run game. 
I think make both of these guys really good football players. Now, of course, Winter's ahead right now, but both of them could potentially pass Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. In fact, that's the best case scenario for the 49ers. For the depth chart to have these two guys, D. Winters and Jalen Graham, pass Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. That means your linebacker room is impressive. That means your linebacker room has gotten better because Flanagan Fowles has been getting snaps for a few years now. So this would be huge for the San Francisco 49ers to potentially have two young guys step up and take that role. So right now, these guys are on the fringe of making this roster. I think it's pretty set with the guys that are there and the fact that Greenlaw is going to start as a pup, that D. Winters and Jalen Graham have a really good shot of making the roster. Curtis Robinson, another guy I brought up, has been with the football team for a little while, linebacker out of Stanford. Stanford relationship with John Lynch makes sense. Uh, but Robinson's been on the 40 yards practice squad for the last couple of years. In fact, two years ago, he made the 40 yards initial 53-man roster. Last year, he didn't. He was cut, and he ended up on the practice squad. And during the season, he was offered a contract to go sign with another team to be on their roster. Uh, and that's an NFL roster. And he turned it down for the opportunity to stay with the 49ers and play with this unit. He felt he had a connection. He felt they had a special team. He wasn't wrong. They ended up going to the Super Bowl, and I think he felt like he had a really good opportunity to win a Super Bowl with the 49ers. The 49ers like Curtis Robinson. They like how he plays special teams. They like his ability to play Sam linebacker and the versatility to play Mike linebacker if they need him. He's not ultimately going to be fantastic in coverage. He's just good. Uh, he's got definitely not one of the, the best linebackers they have on the football team, but he's steady. And so I think the 49ers are still high on Robinson and what he could be. So Robinson's going to have a real opportunity to step in and try to make this football team. Do the 49ers feel comfortable with Jalen Graham and Mike? If something happened to Fred, you have to have a player that could step in. So if it's not, if it's Jalen Graham, then you feel comfortable. You let the young guy go. If not, you've got to keep Curtis Robinson on your football team because he can play Mike. I don't think the 49ers want Demetrius Flanagan Fowles playing Mike, even though he has that ability. I think they would prefer it be Jalen Graham or Curtis Robinson, but that could be Flanagan Fowles' way to get on this roster. So Robinson is there. Then Ezekiel Turner. Ezekiel Turner, the 49ers brought in. He's from the Arizona Cardinals. Hyper-athletic linebacker whose main role is playing special teams. Now, when you bring a guy in like Turner, you want to see what he'll be within your system. But the 49ers lost Oren Burks. Losing Oren Burks and his special teams prowess was a big knock. The first year they signed him out of Green Bay, the expectation was he was going to be a backup linebacker that helped on special teams. Then, hopefully, he could translate into a starting role once they lost the linebacker ahead of him as he's Al Shire. Of course, he did step in, and he had himself a pretty good season. Problem was, he got exposed late in the season. And then some of the feelings and some of the, the ways they believed he could be in their system changed. So, the 49ers know they've got talent at the end of this roster, and Ezekiel Turner is going to add to that. I think the first thought process is he's going to be a special teams player, but he's going to have to play the position. Kyle Shanahan's been very clear on this for many years. They don't just sign players to be special teams players. You also have to be able to add at your position because you just don't get enough roster spots to delegate one guy special teams only. You have three guys that you do that with. That's your kicker, your punter, and your long snapper. Everyone else has to be able to help with the position. If George Odom is, if there's an injury at the position, they expect him to go in and play safety and play at a high level, or they wouldn't have him on the roster. You can get other guys to play special teams, and I know he's spectacular at the position, but you got to make sure you have guys step up. So Ezekiel Turner is going to have to develop as a linebacker. And I don't know if we've seen consistent play from Turner in his time in the NFL. But let's see what happens when you get him in a system where he gets to run free and play athletic and the way that Johnny Hollins develops linebackers. There could be an opportunity for him on this roster. Now, since he's a veteran, I put him ahead of the linebacker that's going to be last. But I definitely think Ezekiel Turner's lower on this roster, especially when you look up and most of the guys not named Devondre Campbell have all been 49ers before. Holdovers, Fred Warner, Greg Greenlaw, Flanagan Fowles, D. Winters, Jalen Graham, all five of those guys have been 49ers linebackers for at least one season. So it's going to be a little bit harder. And Ezekiel Turner is going to be thrown into that fold, and we'll see what he can do. 
The last of the linebackers on the end of the depth chart right now is Tatum Bethune, a new draft pick, seventh round pick out of Florida State. Six foot, uh, over 230 pounds, runs a 4640. A uh, real instinctive player, and I like Tatum Bethune, and I, I think he's got a nose for the ball. He's definitely got the vision that it takes. He sees a window, he gets downhill, and he makes plays, but he's also sneaky in coverage. You would think with the four six eight, he wouldn't be as good in coverage as he is, but he's able to run with tight ends. He's able to run with running backs and have closing speed to c- guard them. Uh, he's very good. He's a guy that could develop into a will linebacker. Now, as a Sam linebacker, the way teams are trying to put the 49ers in their base and then attack the Sam linebacker, that's something that the 49ers could definitely address with Bethune or more than likely with D. Winters, a guy that has will linebacker responsibilities but are also tough in the run game. Bethune is an interesting player, and I think it won't take him long to move up this depth chart. Is he going to get up high enough to make this roster? I think that's to be determined. But what the 49ers have now is some mix of veterans with young players and they've got to work out their best possible unit. How many guys are they going to keep on their team at linebacker? Five, six. I think a lot of that's determined by Dre Greenlaw. Starts on the pup list. They might go ahead and keep an extra linebacker just so they have depth in case something happens. It also may, might make them more inclined to keep a veteran if Winters and Jalen Graham aren't up to snuff. If D. Winters and Jalen Graham are playing to the expectation and the ability that you believe that they can play at, then that makes it easier. You don't have to keep veteran players just to keep veteran players. Like I brought up before, the best situation for the 49ers is that D winners, Jalen Graham and Tatum Bethune are playing at such a high level that they can move on from some of those veterans that D winners, Jalen Graham and Tatum Bethune are playing great on special teams as well. If that's the case, then special teams holdovers like Flanning and Fouls, uh, like Curtis Robinson and potentially a guy they brought in for special teams, Ezekiel Turner, may not be as important to this team. And if you're upgrading the linebacker position with depth like that, that's exactly what you need. So 49ers linebacker room is going to be an interesting watch this year. It's going to be fun to see how Devondre Campbell steps up and plays the role because there are still question marks about how good is he. Is he the 2021 Devondre Campbell? Or is he the one they saw in 22 and 23? Is D. Winters and Jalen Graham figured out uh, what to do, and is one of them going to step up and take over that Sam linebacker role? It's going to be interesting. Is Tatum Bethune good enough to jump the other guys and make this roster? Fun. It's it's nice at this time of the year that you have conversations about uh, your young players and your depth players being able to step up and potentially step into a role that you're needing. The best situation, of course, is that the 49ers get D winners to play Oh, uh, Sam linebacker. If Andre Campbell plays up to the level that is expected of him and he plays to that 2021 All-Pro level, Fred does Fred things. And then when Dre Greenlaw comes back, then you go ahead and you work him in and you allow Campbell to play some of those snaps at Will Linebacker still, and you work Dre Greenlaw back into Will. That way, when you get to playoffs and Super Bowl, you roll with those three linebackers. You tell everyone in this league, you want to go with a situation where you're going to put Uh, Us in 4-3, we have the guys that can cover you now. You can't take advantage of our third linebacker. And if Devondre Campbell is potentially not able to cover as good in space as the same linebackers you would like, you have D winners, hopefully. So the 49ers are starting to get answers when it comes to depth. Of course, you have to answer it all on the field. Answering on paper doesn't always get it done. But good thing is the 49ers have definitely done it over the last two years with drafts. Late draft picks who they could potentially develop. And why not? Why not use late draft picks to develop at linebacker? It's worked before. Just look at Dre Greenlaw, fifth round pick. Look at Aziz Al Shire, undrafted free agent. 49ers, this is what they do. And we're going to see if they did it again. So thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode. Uh, glad you guys came by. Had a lot of fun talking 49ers linebackers and that depth room. It's going to be a fun battle when we get to training camp. And I'm hoping to hear good, positive things about how these guys are stepping up. Let me know how you think the depth chart would go. I, I know that some people probably won't want to have Demetrius Flanagan fouls where he's at. I went with seniority and what the 49ers believe, not what I believe. I've struggled a little bit with Flanagan fouls in the past. You have me over on Patreon. You know, a couple years ago, his, his play against Chicago definitely was not my favorite. So I definitely want young guys to step up. Let me know who you think can step up in these situations. 
at linebacker? How do you feel about Devondre Campbell? And what do you think about the end of the roster? Tatum Bethune, is he going to be able to pass Ezekiel Turner and Curtis Robinson and have a shot to make this team? I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's always a great thing to like and subscribe for me. I appreciate it. It, it always helps out. Listening audio platform, 40 yards cut back on Believe. And this episode, of course, brought to you by Bet Online. The game starts here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay safe. And remember, the right way is always the 49ers way.